Does evolutionary psychology explain why people with higher levels of Neanderthal ancestry exhibit more introversion, demonstrate less emotional stability, have higher levels of social anxiety and depression, and do not enjoy reading fiction? Evolutionary psychology is a scientific discipline that approaches human behavior through a lens that incorporates the effects of evolution. It combines the science of psychology with the study of biology to explain the difference between Neanderthal and modern human behaviors. Put aside everything you thought you knew about being human. Evolutionary psychologists seek to explain people's emotions, thoughts, and responses based on Charles Darwin's theory of evolution through natural selection. Similarly to how evolutionary biologists explain an organism's physical features. Proponents of this psychological approach, the rise that as our ancestors confronted problems and developed ways of solving them, some had certain innate instincts and intelligence that gave them the ability to figure out and apply the most successful solutions. In doing so, they gained advantages, such as better health or a longer lifespan, allowing them to produce more offspring through the process of natural selection. According to evolutionary psychology, our ancestors who had psychological advantages passed down these behavioral traits to future generations, resulting in a population of offspring that then had these adaptive behaviors. Psychological abilities, such as reading others' intentions, making friends, and gaining trust, are known to help a person throughout life. Evolutionary psychologists believe that these skills are rooted in deeply complex neural circuits in the brain and that they are inherited. These innate behavioral tendencies are often tempered by input from our culture, family, and individual factors. But the principle of evolutionary psychology is that the underlying neural mechanisms are shaped by evolutionary forces. Evolutionary psychology is a well-defined discipline of study and research with fundamental foundations that have developed and continue to guide new studies. There are five basic principles of evolutionary psychology. 1. Your brain is a physical system that instructs you to behave in a manner appropriate and adaptive to your environment. 2. The neural circuitry of your brain helps you solve problems in an appropriate manner. The specific ways that the neural circuitry is constructed were directed by natural selection over the course of generations. 3. Most of your psychological behaviors are determined subconsciously by your neural circuitry, and you are largely unaware of these subconscious processes. You rely on conscious decision-making to guide you in your daily life, and you may be aware of the conclusions resulting from the complex neural circuitry, while remaining unaware of the underlying process involved. 4. Neural circuits in the brain are specialized to solve different adaptive problems. For example, the circuitry involved in vision is not the same as for hearing. 5. Your mind is based on adaptive changes that originated in the Pleistocene era, also known as the Stone Age. At its most basic level, evolutionary psychology explains skills that we consider to be relatively simple and common to most humans, such as language. At some point in history, early humans developed language skills beyond grunting and pointing. The ability to communicate complex thoughts was beneficial for human survival, and, as a result, language acquisition abilities evolved and advanced through the process of natural selection. Evolutionary psychologists may argue that advanced language skills contribute to a person's safety, survival, and reproduction. Nevertheless, the language or languages you learn depends on the language spoken in your home and neighborhood, demonstrating the importance of cultural input. Phobias are fears that are irrational and go beyond protecting you from danger. For example, research shows you are more likely to fear snakes and spiders than other predatory animals, such as lions and tigers. From an evolutionary point of view, this may be due to the fact that snakes and spiders are more difficult to spot. It made sense to our ancestors to look carefully for poisonous creatures before sticking their hands into trees or brush. Over time, that ability to recognize and quickly react to these small, quiet creatures became a trait that many humans inherited as an instinctive reaction. For example, a young child who has never heard of the dangers of snakes or spiders may have a dramatic reaction at seeing one, probably rooted in evolutionary psychology. Like all prey species, early Homo sapiens acquired the innate ability to identify predators and remain hypervigilant for telltale signs of their presence. 
In modern humans, this vestigial predator identification module is still expressed in art, myths, movies and other cultural forms. Our genetic fear of predation may be manifested in the countless myths and legends about half-man, half-beasts. Throughout history, every culture has conceived of hairy creatures that prey on humans, often at night. The large brains of Neanderthals have been a source of debate from the time of the first fossil discoveries of this group, but getting any real idea of the quality of their brains has been very problematic. Hence, academic discussion has centered on their material culture and way of life, as indirect signs of the level of complexity of their brains, in comparison with ours. For decades, anthropologists have puzzled over the differences between Neanderthal and modern human brains. If each species had comparable brain power, why did modern human culture outpace the Neanderthal? Looking at data from 27,000 to 75,000-year-old fossils, mostly from Europe and the Near East, scientists compared the skulls of 32 anatomically modern humans and 13 Neanderthals, to examine brain size and organization. The researchers calculated the standard size of fossil brains for body mass and visual processing requirements. Once the differences in body and visual system size are taken into account, researchers were able to compare how much of the brain was left over for other cognitive functions. The researchers used the known relationship between the height of the eye socket and the size of visual brain areas in living primates to estimate how much of each brain was dedicated to visual processing. Once differences in body size and visual system size were taken into account, researchers then compared how much of the brain was left over for other types of cognition. Although Neanderthals' brains were similar in size to their contemporary modern human counterparts, analysis of fossil data suggests that their brain structure was rather different. The results imply that larger areas of the Neanderthal brain, compared to the modern human brain, were given over to vision and movement, and this left less room for the higher-level thinking, required to form large social groups. This allows estimating how much of the Neanderthal brain was allocated to cognitive functions, including the regulation of social group size. A smaller size for the social group size would have had implications for their level of social complexity and their ability to create, conserve and build on innovations. Thus, since the Neanderthal brain was more focused on vision and movement, this allowed them to see better and maintain larger bodies. However, because big-eyed and big-bodied Neanderthals required more brain space devoted to the visual system and basic body functions, this left less brain space for creative thinking and social intelligence. During the Middle Stone Age, Neanderthals morphed from a dumb omnivore into savage, cannibalistic carnivores, top flight predators of the Middle Paleolithic. Eventually they became the apex predator of Europe, residing at the top of the food chain, and everything else, including other humans they encountered became their prey. Neanderthals in Europe also developed a very confrontational and dangerous style of hunting, and were very dependent on a heavy meat diet. Modern humans, in Africa, developed the bow and arrow, as well as spear throwers, which allowed hunting at arm's length and often focused on smaller prey. In some of the fossils, researchers found that Neanderthals had significantly larger eye sockets, and therefore, larger eyes than modern humans. Not only were the eyes of Neanderthals approximately 20% larger than modern humans, they were also much higher in the skull than ours. Neanderthals probably had larger eyes than contemporary humans, because they evolved in Europe, whereas contemporary humans had only recently emerged from sub-Saharan Africa. Modern humans, living at higher latitudes, also evolved bigger vision areas in the brain to cope with the low light levels. Indeed, the optical orbits, the eye sockets, of Neanderthals were considerably larger than modern humans. Neanderthals may have evolved these extra-large eyes because like most mammalian predators, they were nocturnal hunters. Slit-shaped pupils are better suited to the eyes of nocturnal primates because they can close down tighter, preventing damage to their supersensitive eyes from strong sunlight. Like modern nocturnal predators, Neanderthals may have even had slit-shaped pupils to protect them from snow blindness. It's clear that environmental differences affected the evolution of each species. The common ancestor of Neanderthals and Homo sapiens was probably Homo heidelbergensis. It had a bulkier body, as did the Neanderthals, but Homo heidelbergensis did not possess enlarged eyes. 
the large eyes of Neanderthals are purely an adaptation to low light levels and long dark nights at higher latitudes, outside the tropics. Prey species have an innate ability to identify their natural predator in order to effect escape strategies. The distinctive eyes of Neanderthals provided a quick and reliable means of identifying predators, so these optical features have been hardwired into our genes. By the Middle Ages, the hairy wild man was well entrenched in European mythology as a malevolent forest-dwelling brute, who usually wielded a club, and abducted innocent women. Artistic expressions of creatures that possess Neanderthal characteristics are not limited to ancient times. The way modern artists, hoaxers, villagers and filmmakers depict the yeti, abominable snowman, Bigfoot and other imaginary creatures, bears an uncanny resemblance to the Eurasian Neanderthal. Today, this innate fear is expressed in a universal portrayal of bug-eyed monsters that transcend the history of art and culture. This preoccupation with the telltale eyes of threat has a deep history in art, mythology and movies. Indeed, the preoccupation with scary-eyed monsters goes back to the earliest art and transcends every culture. This fear is no less prevalent in modern times, as movie monsters often feature these striking, large eyes. This suggests a likeness of the predatory Neanderthal was encoded into the human genome during our evolutionary past. It is this innate predator recognition that is subliminally expressed in art, myths, movies and legends. Movies, including Planet of the Apes, The Descent, The Blair Witch Project, The Exorcist, and The Terminator unwittingly tap into our innate Neanderthal fears to dramatic effect. Similarly, the nocturnal zombies, from I Legend, and the hairy Morlocks, with their glowing eyes, from The Time Machine also produce this fear response. As for what happened to the Neanderthals, some researchers believe that they were simply absorbed into the modern human population, or died out because of climate change. There is genetic evidence that, as numerous humans migrated into Europe, they interbred with Neanderthals. Another theory is that Neanderthals went extinct because they were less capable of forming large social networks. Smaller social groups might have made Neanderthals less able to cope with the competition from modern humans because they would not have been able to fend off their large numbers. They didn't have the cognitive abilities to adopt new technologies, like the bow and arrow or spear thrower. Behold, Neanderthal man, our ugliest, stupidest ancestor! <laughs> Therefore, having less brain available to manage the social world, had profound implications for the Neanderthal's ability to maintain extended trading networks, and is likely also to have resulted in a less well-developed culture. This may have left them unable to compete with a more advanced modern human culture in Ice Age Europe. Overall, differences in brain organization and social cognition may go a long way towards explaining why Neanderthals went extinct, whereas modern humans survived. It was clear that, by the end, they were struggling to maintain a foothold in Ice Age Europe, having been squeezed down into the southern appendages of Europe, in places like Spain and Italy. This answers a big problem in human evolution. The relationship between absolute brain size and higher cognitive abilities has long been controversial, and this could explain why Neanderthal culture appears less developed than that of early modern humans, for example in relation to symbolism, ornamentation, and art. This doesn't make us better than them, and it doesn't confirm the age-old prejudices about stupid, brutish Neanderthals. What it does do, quite literally, is make us see them with different eyes. Furthermore, contrary to some myths, Neanderthals were not short, hairy, and stooped over, they looked a lot like modern humans, but a few inches shorter and with more muscles and thicker bones. Neanderthals didn't grunt and growl to communicate, they probably spoke much like we do today. Neanderthals also ate more than only meat, evidence suggests they also ate cooked vegetables and medicinal plants. They were artistic, archaeologists have found rock art and musical instruments attributed to Neanderthals. They were not savages, they cared for their sick, young, and elderly. And finally, only some Neanderthals lived in caves, most lived in fairly complex teepee-like structures, sometimes made of mammoth bones. Thanks for watching and sharing this video. Please subscribe and leave a thought-provoking comment.